How did I get here? My brother brought you. He found you out on the desert. And you've been acting like a locoed horse for two days. I'm sorry. I guess I must have been quite a bit of trouble. Well, Sam, the boys here took care of you, though, didn't you, fellas? Well, we weren't much help. It was Miss Joan here. She fed you like you was a baby. This is Shorty McDuff and Tin Cut Callahan. Howdy. Hi. Hello. I'm Joan Carson. Carson? You say your brother found me? Yes. Is his name Sunset Carson? That's right. And a lucky thing for you, Sunset was out looking for strays. Well, he saved your life. A life for a life. That's strange. No, you ain't quoting right at that. Tooth for a tooth. Something. Oh, it's, it's an eye for an eye, Tin Cup. In this case, it's a life. When I was out of my head, did I talk about anything special? You're talking about your hat. I mean, through your hat, mostly. Your talk didn't make very much sense. Yeah, and you kept mumbling about a letter, too. You sure was anxious to hear from somebody. Tell Webster to let me know when the committee arrives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glad to see you feeling better. Thanks. This is my brother, Sam Carson, Mr. I'm, uh, the Kansas kid. The Kansas, huh? I figured you must be an Easterner when you drank from that poison spring. That and your flat shoes. How'd you happen to be alone in the desert without a horse? I jumped off the freight. I thought I was taking a shortcut to the nearest town. Thought well, perhaps I could get a job. Well, there's plenty of work here on the ranch. Yeah, we do need some help. What part of Kansas are you coming from? Green Valley. Ever been there, Mr. Carson? Never been any farther east in Wyoming. A friend of mine moved out there. I wonder if you ever met him. A man named John Ward. John Ward? Sure I know him. Tall fellow looks something like you. What did you see him last? Three months ago. Over near Laramie. He was looking for a mine. I grub staked him. What do you ask? Oh, I... I just thought you might know something about it. He dropped out of sight. I tried to locate him, but had to get back to the ranch. You said he was a friend of yours? A very close friend of mine. But he's dead. Sorry to hear that. Taken quite a liking to John. Only knew him a short time. The committee's waiting for you, Sunset. I'll be right along. My partner, Sam Webster, the Kansas kid. Howdy, kid. Hello. It's the committee to look over the plans for the new school building. We're badly in need of a school in this district. Schools and churches will bring prosperity to the West. Yeah, and desirable citizens. The kind that build up a country. We'll have another talk as soon as you're on your feet. Yes, we have quite a lot to talk about. Sunset has his heart set on child education. He's chairman of the board to raise funds. Well, I wouldn't mind going back to school myself if you were going to be the <laughs> teacher. Are you really worried about a letter? Yes, I am. You could write and give the address of my brother's ranch. I'll have to wait and make up my mind what to do. Right now, I don't know the answer. Well, we'll discuss it later then. Hey, Sunset, I'll be with you as soon as I tell the boys to take your convention. That thin old Mustang kicked another board off his stall. So I'm going to take it easy with him. He'll be a good horse when he's broken in. Right. Hey, Shorty, you and Ten Cup, come here.
You boys go down and fix up Comanche's broken stall. Oh, you'll kick our brains out. You ain't got any. Ah, oh, come on, Shorty. What are you afraid of? I'll watch you. Well, it looks like that schoolhouse deals are going through. You figuring on letting Sunset build it? Not by a jug full. The kind of men I'm bringing into this district have already had their school. <laughs> <laughs> but there ain't no harm in letting Sunset raise the money. Not if we can get it. We will. You boys know who that tenderfoot is that Sunset brought in off the desert? Yeah. He's a Kansas kid. A Kansas kid in my eye. I've been trying to place him when I was over in the bunkhouse. Then I remembered. Well, who is he? It's Bob Ward. Are you sure? I'm dead certain. You saw Bob's picture. Sure, the one the old man had on his desk. Right. I even remember what was written on it. To Dad, with love and admiration, your son, Bob. Why do you think the kid showed up here? Reckon he's wise to us? I don't know, but he ain't staying. I'm just about ready to finish off, Carson. And I'm not having word around to make it tough for us. We'll get rid of him. Wait a minute, boys. We can't show a hand to Carson. Murdoch, here, foreman of this outfit. Wait till I get in the house and then throw it off the ranch. I think we can put up a building that size at a reasonable figure. Well, I don't know. The building's too big, if you ask me. We don't have near enough money or that many children in the whole district. Maybe not, but more children will soon fill the empty seats. This district will grow. Yeah, two families came in on the train just last week. Well, it sounds like a good plan to me, but it's going to cost a lot. Well, that's what I say. Just where do you propose to raise this sum of money? I have a list of pledges here. Mr. Smith gave 300, Mr. Nevins 4. Well, if Nevins give four, I'll give four. Now, you're talking, Smith. Will you match me another hundred, too? Oh, I don't believe a cat. Well, thanks. The McSwinney family, there's 11 of them. Twelve. Another one already? They gave ten dollars. Here's a list of names and pledges that totals to another couple hundred. Well, you can't put up a building for this amount. It's only a thousand dollars. It ain't near enough. My brother forgot to mention that he's giving a thousand himself. Yeah, it still ain't enough. I think it's foolish to build, and what about the teacher's pay? Hello, fellas. What are you doing on this ranch? I don't see that it happens to be any of your business, that I'm making it my business. I'm foreman of this outfit, and I don't want you around here. So get going and keep going. I'm not getting off this ranch till I'm good and ready. Then I'm throwing you off. with a kid, Murdoch. Well, he said he was going to throw me off the ranch. I don't know why. We don't want any saddle bums around here. You're not the one who's giving orders. It's not up to you to say, Murdoch. Just the same. He's getting off of the ranch. You're wrong. You're the one who's getting. Go pack your saddle. Not me. I'm working for Webster, ain't I? You heard what Sunset said. And that goes for me, too. I don't like the way you handle things. You'd better pull stakes, Murdoch. 
Here's a month's pay. Now get started. You want him jailed? No. You're too anxious to put people in that new jail of yours, Sheriff. Come on, let's finish your little talk. It's a good idea. What's the idea of not backing me up? Take it easy, Murdoch. You'll be more valuable away from the wrench. Let's well, cooked up a little scheme with the school committee. As soon as I find out what it is, I'll get in touch with you. I guess I owe you another vote of thanks, Mr. Carson. Forget it, kid. Any friend of John Ward's is a friend of mine. If you'd like to stick around the ranch for a while, you're welcome. It would fit in with my plan. Good. I've got quite a herd of prize horses. Give you a chance to get acquainted with some thoroughbreds. But stay away from Comanche. That horse is the devil. Well, maybe you'll pick me out a quiet one until I learn how to ride. Well, we can start him out on Old Pope. Old Pope, now, that sounds about like my speed. What about that other thousand dollars, Sunset? You still gonna give it? That's right, sure. Well, come me in for a thousand. One would have to go 50-50 and everything. How about you, kid? Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not fixed very well financially. Uh, school wouldn't do you any good anyhow. You've got no wife and children, have you? Well, uh, no, not yet. It's a good thing to be prepared. You can't ever tell when you'll need a school. Yeah, I still say that it's not enough to build a good-sized chicken coop. Well, maybe you're right, Sheriff, but I have some plans to raise some additional money. Ever heard of Slugger Appalatimus? He's a prize fighter, ain't he? Yeah, he's been born storming around the country. What has a prize fighter got to do with the school, anyhow? A lot of people will pay good money to see a prize fight. Talk about putting on an exhibition about that is, if it's agreeable with Sam. Oh, sure, why not? We're partners in everything. Good. I remember you telling about your past experience in the ring. That you might box with this lugger. I will. John will be my second. I'll do anything I can to help. Fine. I'm expecting the slugger in tomorrow morning. I'll give you plenty of time to get in shape. Where are you going to hold about? I thought the location of the new schoolhouse would be a good spot. Well, we won't take in much money selling tickets unless we make the mission, say, fifty, hundred dollars We won't have taken all the money we can. It's a good idea. We'll ride in town, get some of the other ranchers together, and help us ride out and spread the news. They're interested in the school as much as we are. That's a good idea. Right. Good enough for me. Present from Miss Jones. By Jiminy, that girl is sure taking care of you. Well, that's awfully nice of Miss Carson, but I can't accept them. Why not? You want to be a Westerner, don't you? Well, yes, but I... Then quit your griping. You gotta learn to dress right if you're gonna learn that a saddle horn ain't something you blow on. Here, let's tell you a look in a He-Man hat. Hey, easy with that hat. I wasn't going nowhere with your broken down sky piece. Uh, where's Sunset? Drove down to the railroad station. That fighter's due in on the morning train. Speaking of fighters, we better get down to the barn and find some stuff to build that prize ring out of. Yeah, but have you ever seen one of them things? Nope, but when Slugger Applebottomus or whatever his name shows up, we get some pointers from him. Good idea. See you later, kid. Come Go on. on, kid. drive for the school? Yeah, and it looks like we'll even have enough money to pay for the teacher. That idea of yours sure put it over. Folks is all talking about the fight. Picking up the fighter this morning. I hope he's good. Looks all right to me. You seen him? Yeah. Train's been in and gone. Your foreman Murdoch picked him up in a buckboard. Said he was taking him out the ranch. Well, I fired Murdoch. Then something's wrong? I don't know, but I'm training that buckboard. Which way did they go? Toward Boulder. Take care of this horse for me. All right.
Thanks, mister. That guy slugged me with the rod and cracked my wrist. It's not broken. It's pretty badly bruised. I don't know why he cocked me with a gat. He wanted to get even with me. I'm Sunset Carson. He was my foreman. I just fired him. Well, bust my army and get him back at you. I wanted to stop the bounce. The money was to build a new school. Well, that dirty palooka. But maybe I'm lucky. If you hadn't have stopped him, I'd be pushing up daisies. Say, this puts you behind eight ball, don't it? Yeah. We can't keep the money unless we give the ranchers a fight. Where can I get another fighter? Don't ask me. All the fighters I know are back east. Say, will you get me some tape and stuff out of the suitcase and fix up my wrist? All right, then we'll ride back to the ranch and I'll call Doc Morgan. <laughs> I heard he has a bad temper. When he gets mad, he's liable to kill somebody. Sunset would never kill anyone. Well, I heard this one. Well, you may mean in a gunfight. No, I heard he killed a man. Deliberately shot him down. That's a lie. Who told you? My father. Well, I didn't mean to call your father a liar, but I know there's some mistake. Perhaps. Time will tell. Slow down! Try to get away from me, will you? Out! Fine thing for a fighter. Boy, am I sunk. 
That's too bad. Have any idea who done it? Murdoch. I thought he'd do something to get even with you. Say, uh, where'd you learn that right hook? Oh, I boxed a little in college. Oh, scientific stuff. An amateur. Sometimes amateurs can beat professionals. Listen, lady, I ain't arguing after seeing that. That might get the canvas. That was just a lucky punch. Oh, no. I'd like to see him try it again. Any time. Maybe you two'd really like to finish the fight. After the way he was abusing Comanche, it'd be a pleasure. Well, that suits me. All right, boys. Step back and give this tender foot room to fall. Not here. Now, look, I know you both are good fighters. How about putting on an exhibition bout for the school? Well, I'd rather not. After all, I'm not a professional. Well, now's as good a time as any to turn yellow. We can get another fighter. One who's more interested in kids than you are. That's just the trouble. We can't get another fighter. So we'll have to call off the school deal. Wait, uh, in that case, I'll fight. Good. Sure is a wonderful horse. Seems to like you. I guess that's because I like him. Say, uh, if I worked here, maybe I could make enough money to buy Comanche. Comanche ain't for sale. You've been trying to buy my interest in the horse, Sam. You think you're going to win the fight? Suppose we we'll put the horse up as a prize to the winner of the battle. That suits me, Sunset. Good, I know I'll win now. You'll be mine, pal. Uh, don't you think the kid ought to have some training to get in shape? I'll give you that job if you'll take it. Count on me. He'll be sorry he ever stepped into the sluggers. You ain't been doing any training. He's liable to knock your block off. I don't have to train. That tender foot so weak, he'll fall on his face the first time I hit him. Well, I ain't interested in your personal fight. How do we get the dinero? Sunset chairman of the board. I'll see that he takes the money into the bank. Yeah, and the sheriff will ride along to guard it. Don't you worry about that. I'll delay the sheriff long enough for you boys to take over. And I don't care how bad Carson gets hurt. He'll get hurt bad enough, all right. If you take care of Sunset, meet me back at the ranch. Something like a bump on a log ain't gonna get you in condition. I know. I, I never used to be so short-winded. Tinkup tells me it was that poison water you drank. Yeah, it left me kind of weak. I'm ready. We'll make it back to the ranch without another stop. All right. this exhibition bout. Exhibition bout? Nothing. It's a grudge fight. Hey, Tin Cup, these ropes ought to be low, so when the Kansas kid hits him, Webster will sail clear out of the ring. No, no, shorty, they ought to be high like they are, so when he hits him, he'll bounce, and then he'll bounce back, and the guy hits him again. Bounce? bounce? I don't see how he'll bounce. Well, look, I'll show you. Tin Cup! Assault and battery. I'm locking you two guys up. Assault battery? 
About six months, I'd say. Six months? Wait a minute. If you put them in jail, who's going to finish the ring? Yeah, who'll finish the fight ring? Yeah, nobody will have to do these contraptions, but... Now, uh, when am I going to get somebody to put in that new jail? Oh, that's all you want, Sheriff. People to put in your jail. Why, look, a lot of people to put in your jail. Yeah, we get a whole dozen. Two dozen. Ah, uh, never mind. After the fight's over, I'll still have a nice, clean cell for you guys. Now, get to work. Come on, Nevin. Yeah. I said work. Keep that left off now. <laughs> that's it. That's it. The left jab. Keep those hands up high. Those hands up high. That's it, boy. One, two now. Out of point. That's it. Up. Keep those hands up. What's the matter? I'm all in. All in? You haven't even worked up a sweat. Say, what's eating you anyway? Ah, uh, something about sunset bothers me. Fighters ain't supposed to be bothered about nothing except winning. Now, get to work or get your block knocked off. You want to win that horse, don't you? More than anything I ever wanted in my life. All right. And get going. You're not winning by sitting there. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm tired. I'm a slugger. Do you think I'm in shape? Oh, I don't know. you got a few more days to go. Don't stall me. I'm no doctor. How do you feel? Well, my heart beats like a trip hammer. Never used to do that when I boxed in college. Maybe we ought to tell Sunset. Oh, no, I'll, I'll be all right. We can't let him down. All right, take a break. Howdy, kid. How Hi. you doing? Fine. We got the fight ring, don't slugger. The sheriff nearly threw us in jail. Did you build it the way I told you to? Sure, we built it right. What do you think we are? Well, I don't know. Hey, do you want a warrant sworn out for Murdoch's arrest? Sheriff would be tickled to lock him up. He's got a brand new jail with nobody in it. No, thanks. I'm not in the habit of running to the cops. Come on, kid, let's go. That's it. Keep that left up now. That's it. One, two. One, that's it. Left jab. That's it. Hello, Comanche boy. After the fight, you're going to belong to me. Turn on knocking off the canvas kid in the first round? No, oh, not till the third or fourth. Then I'll jolt him one of the heart and he'll drop like a pile of stone. Why don't you go for his chin? Uh, it takes a man a long time to recover from that poison spring. A blow under his heart will knock him loose from his pins. Then I'll go to work on the jaw. Remember what I said. Box will come. Keep that left hand out there. If he comes after you, keep away from him. All right, I, I won't forget. All right, be patient, everybody. The fighters will be here in a few minutes. In the meantime, Buddy McDowell and his rodeo revelers, Leonard Clean is with, listen to the Mockingbird. All right, buddy.
say anything, Sunset, but it's been worrying me. Kansas has something on his mind. He's a strange kid. Sometimes I can't understand him. He said an odd thing about you. I thought maybe we could clear it up before the fight. Well, maybe we can. What did he say? His father told him that you killed a man. Well, maybe I have beaten a few men to the draw. He didn't mean a fair fight. He meant murder. Murder is a pretty strong charge to bring against a man. I've been wondering about all those questions he's been asking me, but uh, there's no need talking to him about it now until after the fight. He's got a tough time ahead. Do you think he'll lose? Slugger told me he wasn't shaping up the way he should. I talked to Sam about making it an exhibition bout, but... Uh, he wouldn't agree. Well, Sam had his cap set on you till the kid cut him out. Jealous man's a dangerous man. But I've never given him any encouragement. Maybe not, but he's after the kid's skill. School means a lot to you, doesn't it? That's right. Well, Kansas means a lot to me. Maybe I better call off the fight. Why don't we tell him about it and let him decide? I'll do that. Slugger says you're not in shape. Do you want to postpone the fight? You want to? Yeah. Sunset can give the money back. No, I've seen some of the youngsters around here, and school is more important than what happens to me. I've watched Sam train. Keep away from his right. He's dependent on it. Thanks for the tip.
stomach. Keep away from his right. Get it? And work on his stomach. Everything in the buckboard. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
What's up, Ted? I'm sorry about the kid. It's all right, Slugger. You did the best you could. Hey, Sunset. <clears throat> Better get into town before the bank closes. Yeah, I don't want to be responsible for this money any longer than I have to. Where's Sunset going? Well, I suppose he's going to the bank. Why, well, that hard-headed galoot, he should have waited for me. Yeah. You know, it is sort of funny, Sheriff, that he'd be taking all that money to town without an armed guard. After all the trouble he went to raising it. Uh-huh. Shorty, him come. Out up and come along with me. I'm deputizing. Huh? You heard me. Who are we going after? Sunset Carson. What'd he do? Nothing yet. I'm just not taking any chances. Come on. Sunset ain't gonna like this. I guess it's a goodbye, Comanche. I sure wish you could go with me. Kansas! Where are you going? Back where I came from. But you mustn't do that just because you lost the fight. Losing the fight isn't the reason. Here, give this to Sunset. He'll understand when he reads it. But why can't you wait and talk to him yourself? No, uh, I wish things had worked out differently, Joan. Oh, goodbye. without any explanation. Yeah, well, there shouldn't be any secrets among partners. He said it was personal for Sunset. It also concerns me. I'll take this up with Sunset later. In the meantime, you'll be safe in there. Get over to the bunkhouse. Come on, get in there. this post. So make sure you don't wander away. I'll have to tie you up.
Not so fast, Sunset. Look, Sheriff, somebody just shot me and got away with the school money. We gotta go after him. I said not so fast. The story sounds fishy. Webster said it looked kind of funny you leaving with all that money without waiting for me. Webster said that? Yeah, Webster's smart. Why, he was saying just the other day he couldn't understand why you wanted to raise all that cash. So you've got everything figured out. That darn tootin' I have. Give me your guns. Sorry, Sheriff. Fine couple of pals you two turned out to be. Now throw away them guns. Yeah, but he deputized us. And, and uh, these are the guns you gave us for Christmas. It's all right. Throw them away. Now, Sheriff, you'll scout around the rocks near here. You'll probably find a trail of the man who shot me. I ain't going on no wild goose chase. I know what I'm doing. You probably scratched yourself to make your story look real. And I'm still locking you up. Riding back into the ranch and having a talk with Webster. I got a hunch he didn't throw fishing on me for nothing. Boy, it's sure good to see you. Oh, you have a broken rein. You must have gotten loose. You'll have to go back, Comanche. You'll have to go back. Yeah, I picked him off with a rifle. Good. Listen to this letter. It's addressed to Bob Ward. Dear son, find Sunset Carson. He, uh, the ink spotted, and you can't read it. But here's the good part. Shot me, take him to the sheriff, and open the enclosed envelope. It's signed Dad. What's in the envelope? Lenny. How do you figure the letter's gonna help us? Well, the letter said Sunset killed Bob's father. And with Carson dead... The kid will get all the blame. The bull-headed sheriff will say the kid's motive was revenge. Yeah, and I saw the kid leave the ranch, which makes it worse for him. How about the girl? Oh, uh, we'll go down on tire. It's only her word against ours as to what happened. And this letter cinches things for us. You told me you knocked him off. He must have just been creased. All right, men. Take cover.
Come down from there. You better them guns, Carson. I'll give you some of the same medicine I give the kid. Suits me. What's going on here? He thinks I had something to do with stealing the school funds. It's worse than that. Read this. This is what you had on your mind. You're Bob Ward. Yeah. It says here that I killed your father. That's right. There's another letter there, too. You know what's in it? No. Sam Webster tore it open and read it. It says to open it in front of the sheriff. Go ahead. I went with Sam Webster to locate a mine. Webster was joined by Murdoch and Pfizer. Webster shot me. The three men took my money given to me by Sunset Carson as a grub stake, and left me for dead. An old Mexican prospector found me. He couldn't speak English. So I'm trying to make him understand. I want him to mail this letter to my son, so Sunset Carson can help him. Signed, John Ward. I'm sorry, Sunset. I owe you an apology. Well, I can't say as I blame you for believing your father. Well, Sheriff, at last you got some prisoners to put in that new jail of yours. Yep, and I'm a putting. Sam Webster? I'm arresting you for murder. And you too, Murdoch. Get on your horses. Move on. This letter was dated a week before Sam Webster bought half interest in my ranch. Looks like he you used your father's money, so that makes you half owner, partner. How does that sound to you, pal? Sounds okay to me, too. <laughs> 